for allowing me um, um, to, to be here today. So first I must apologise. So these things are often challenges, aren't they? I've not done anything like this before. Um, and so put together some words on paper because I'm not very good at just speaking, um, you know, freely, telling my story, don't want to forget stuff. And then I've got up this morning and I've only got like one page of five saved. So you know, um, please, I know you're going to be kind and, um, and, and merciful, so um, I'll do my best. I hope that um, this is something that, um, that you find helpful in some way, and I hope that my words today are just, um, just glorifying our Father God and, and the wonderful work that Jesus um, is doing in our lives Again, so thanks again, Ivor, for letting me um, come here. So the first bit is going to be read, and the and the and then very shortly I'll be winging it. So um, yes, prayers and um, kindness, please. Okay, so um, I'm married to Nigel, um, and we've been married for thirty years. Um, we are really relatively new Christians. Um, we only came to St Mary's and got baptised about seven years ago. Actually, but since um, since meeting Jesus, since becoming Christians, since since discovering our faith, we can see that God has always been with us, actually always with us. Long before we knew who he was, he he was with us and um, always seeking an opportunity to bless us, regardless of our mistakes, um, always seeking to protect and care for us. Um, sometimes that would be very subtly, uh, but sometimes I can look back on my life and know that there were out and out miracles going on. Um, but he was always, always there, just waiting. So um, Nigel and I got together when we were really young um, and we were really broken children. Um, yeah, our lives had not been simple. And so um, uh, that's how we started. Not a bit of a messy beginning, I, I would say. Um, Nigel came from a, a, a very dysfunctional family. Um, violence and aggression were the bread and butter of life for him growing up. That's how you got stuff sorted. That's how you communicated. And that's how you got your needs met. Um, his parents and family generally were really self-centred and just preoccupied with their own needs. I don't mean that as a judgment now. We can look back and know that we're all coming at it. Um, from a place of deficit, but that did mean that Nigel's childhood was really lacking in every basic human need. So my upbringing did look very different from Nigel's. Um, and my parents were hardworking and provided for us, you know, to the best of their ability. Um, we weren't affluent by any means, but, you know, we seemed to be getting by and everything looked okay superficially. But we were really battling all our own demons. So my dad was terribly plagued with temper and anger issues. And so sadly, you know, those things really often overshadowed the good times. Um, so, so sad, so sad for him, actually. Um, and then they were desperately, my family were desperately, desperately played by sickness and death. Um, you know, it seemed to have a hand on our shoulder all the time. Um, by the time I was born, my mum and dad had already sadly lost one child, uh, one of my brothers. And then by the time I was 13 and my brother had died, my mum was severely disabled and my other brother was journeying fast and furiously towards alcoholism. Um, after my dad died, my mum and I were left in a, in a really quite bad way, financially, also emotionally. Um, and so we had to move around a lot. Um, uh, all my family from London, but we moved around to all the places that people from London moved to, um, you know, in the 60s and 70s, um, to, to either um, uh, be near family so they could help us, um, or, or we had to move to a cheaper area because we needed money. My mum and I found life hard. But it was one of these moves that brought um, me to Nigel. Uh, I wound up moving to Milton Keynes, and that is how I met Nigel. And for all of our challenges and difficulties that we've had in life, uh, my marriage is my uh, one of my most precious, precious blessings. I know it was a gift from God. Um, so for all of the difficulties, I'm so grateful for that. So anyway, at that time, we had baby Jane and Nigel, young and naive and inexperienced, coming together at really what should have been a catastrophe. Um, we both came to it carrying our really heavy baggage from our pasts. 
Um, but we we were keen to have something new and have something different. We didn't know what that looked like or how that should be. But um, that's what we attempted to do, to, to have a different kind of life. Now, we had no idea that we were trying to deal with life from a place of deficit, from lack. You know, I mean, we could look at um, around at the people that, that we were part of our lives and we could see that we didn't have the same stuff as them. We knew that in many ways they hadn't experienced some of the things that we had, um, but we didn't really appreciate the true measure of lack. Um, we didn't understand the gaps in our lives and, and, uh, and the difficulties that we'd had and how that had left us. Um, um, without we didn't understand the real reason that we were suffering and in pain um, so we always loved each other deeply um, and we tried our utmost to do better we really did we tried so hard to do better and to be better and to have more but um you know we're talking about worldly stuff and in our childish state we thought that that was going to make the difference that it would make up for the hurt and pain that that would ensure that we would be happy and that our daughter would have a different life and really we did the best that we could the best that two very broken children could do now um it was chaotic um often um but don't get me wrong um we have very very many happy memories of our entire lives together but up until meeting Jesus, those good times were hard for. They were really desperately strived for. But we just couldn't win for losing. We could not make progress. We could not find joy. There was no peace. Everything we had was superficial because we were reeling from our childhoods, you know, and we understand now that we were also suffering from our parents' childhoods and their parents' childhoods, um, which meant that, you know, sadness just often loomed large um, over our lives. Um, um, we, I battled with eating disorders and Nigel battled with his own difficulties, which are, which are his to share, not mine. Um, so the crunch point came, the real, um, the real, uh, yeah, kind of uh, the worst point came um, um, when we when we moved into what we thought was our dream home. So this thing that should have been the joy of our lives, our forever home, um, was actually the worst thing that ever happened to us, but in a way, the best thing. Um, so we worked so hard to make it perfect. Um, there was lots of space in the house and the garden for parties and everything happened at our house. Our daughter's friends were always in and out. We had birthday parties, Christmas parties, New Year's Eve parties. They were big events and people would talk about them. They had loads of fun. We had loads of fun and everything just seemed great. Um, sadly, um, it really wasn't. Yes, we did have lots of fun, but Nigel and I were still operating from a place of lack. It was great. It all looked great. Lots of smiley faces, but we weren't healed. Um, and all we managed to do um, was to push ourselves financially just too far and it wasn't sustainable so the pressure mounted and mounted and something had to be done um, actually we wound up in all ways at the worst point of our lives so uh, it, considering even the the you know the kind of things that Nigel had been through if you knew as a child um, the, you know the sadness of disease and, and loss and addiction in my family um, this was worse because I felt like I'd had the thing that was I was being given as a to save me um, and the thing that I deserved taken away. Um, so by the time we moved to Woodston, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it was a, it was a huge grief. Um, so by the time we moved to Woodston, we were exhausted. We were as close to breaking point as we had ever been. Things were really bad and the price had just been too high. And our desperate attempts to heal ourselves had just not worked. In fact, they just made things so much worse. So it was a really miserable, cold, rainy, disgusting day when we moved to Williston in January 2015. And we left our beautiful forever home, the place that I'm sure that I'd been given, like I say, as a, as a makeup thing, as a, as a way of making up for, for things I'd lost. We moved away from our friends and everything that we thought we needed for a happy life to a really tiny, very, very run down house um, in a place with nothing in it where we knew no one. And the removal men stood in our house with us and said, why have we come? Why have we just left that to come here? 
It was not, it was not our finest moment. It was not our finest moment. And I just thought, how on earth is this going to work? How is this going to help? How on earth are we ever going to be happy? And for a really, really, really long time, I wasn't. However, Nigel immediately loved it here. Not that it was a magic, you know, switch and he was healed far from it, but he had some breathing space. The pressure was off and, and, uh, and he could begin to breathe. So that's how we came to church. This is how we came to find Jesus. I was very, very lonely. Um, I didn't have small children anymore, so I wasn't meeting other mums at school, that kind of thing. D don't work locally, so I wasn't meeting people from going to work. And I was really, really sad. Um, so Nigel suggested that we go to church, actually, not because he wanted to go to church, but he just thought it would be a good way to meet people when he really needed a break from his miserable wife. Um, so that's what we did. So the first time we went to church, I was really, um, although I had some faith, actually, it wasn't that I didn't have any faith at all. Um, I, hadn't been, I hadn't been brought up in a, in a Christian family, although I'd been christened because it's what you do. Um, I'd, I'd always been interested and intrigued and had some level of belief, but saw church as a place of um, judgment, a place you could only go to when you were good enough. Um, had, and that was just based on, I don't know, stuff I'd picked up, not on any experience at all. And so my first time I went to church, I was really resistant. Um, I grumbled all the way there and I expected to have a really frosty um, reception. And I moaned to Nigel and told him I was wearing my full back armour walking down the road. It's just down the road. But I was like, if they say this to me, or if they tell me I'm wearing the wrong thing, I'm not staying, blah, 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 all the way down the road. Um, needless to say, I don't know if any of you that have been to our church, you'll know, that's just the furthest thing that you'd ever expect to receive when you walk into St Mary's at Wollaston. Um, and I was greeted, the first person that greeted me was Linda Smithhurst, for those of you that know her. And... Um, but I wasn't greeted by Linda Smithhurst. I was greeted by Jesus. Um, I got the most warm, welcoming hug. Um, and I know that was a hug from Jesus. It was given to me by Linda. Uh, you know, he used Linda's arms and her body and her face and her words. But it was him hugging me, welcoming me home for the first time. Um, I was just overwhelmed by, I don't know what it was. Um, I sat there, Adrian wasn't there actually, it was Gordon delivering the sermon the first time. And I sat there and listened to the words and I, um, and the songs were sung and, um, and I just broke down. I mean, I cried like, I don't think I've ever cried in public and I couldn't control it and I didn't know why. I now know that that was the beauty of the Holy Spirit healing me. Um, and I cried like that for weeks. Um, every sermon, every song spoke to me of the things that have happened in my life and, and the areas where I was um, carrying baggage. You know, I walked in there on that day full of wearing my, my armour. Um, but really what I was doing, I think, was, was trying to protect um, myself from them seeing my shame, my guilt um, for the things that I'd done. So uh, what seemed like the worst thing that could have happened actually wound up being the kindest and most generous thing that God has ever done for us. Um, um, you know, at that point, um, I had been introduced, at the time of coming to Wollaston, I had been introduced to, um, to prayer and through some Greek Orthodox people that we knew and the idea that, that God is there for you and, and waiting to, to hear your words and offer you um, uh, a solution. And I was convinced that solution would be money that meant that we would stay in our home. But the solution wasn't money. I didn't know that. God answered my prayer in a, in a way that I could never have imagined by, um, by bringing me uh, to, to Wollaston. Um, just the best thing. So Nigel and I were really on fire for this. I mean, we'd never done anything as a couple that we'd enjoyed so much. And we were just, you know, up for everything that God had to offer. Um, and I can see now actually that that passion and enthusiasm was part of um, part of my illness. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a want more girl. I'm a I'm a never you know nothing's never enough. That's the kind of the way I was operating. Um, I wanted more money. I wanted more um, 
and validation from the people around me. I wanted more love and more attention. Um, and so all my life I'd been seeking that, trying to fill this gap that I that I didn't really know that I well, I knew there was something missing, but I didn't understand what it was. And I thought it was stuff and people that were gonna fill that for me. Um, and you know, in my very young years, I did things that I'm I'm not proud of and things that I'm ashamed of and wish that I hadn't done. But I know now that I did all those things in an attempt just to, um, to feel better, to, to feel loved and be enough. Um, and just walking through those doors showed me that Jesus was all that we needed. So we went to Alpha um, and we went on all of the courses. We were, um, I suppose, really annoying to all the people that knew us. Uh, our daughter was 21 at the time and she just couldn't recognize her parents. And she was horrified, actually. She was horrified because this was so different from anything we'd ever, ever had in our lives or ever been or done. And quite frankly, you know, she's not back with it coming forward. She, um, she comes from quite outspoken parents and she didn't mind telling us that she thought that we were nuts and that we needed to stop because I, she was never going to have this thing. But, you know, we got to the point in our lives where, um, where, where she is. I mean, it's such a blessing. Gosh, I can't tell you. I wish I could read to you what I'd written, but we've been so blessed by being uh, part of Jesus' family um, you know, we've, we've been through difficult times since um, since coming to, to, to Wollaston. Nigel had a really serious um, health issue. I don't know if you were in the church at that time, but he was um, he was told that he had a, um, a, a lung condition which was potentially fatal. There would be no treatment. Um, he, he shouldn't really expect to, to live more than, you know, maybe another two or three years. Um, that was initial diagnosis and then he went on for, for further diagnosis and we received such love and prayer I mean I don't know how you get through the difficult times of life without God I don't know how we would have coped um, and, and, and miraculously and mercifully um, everything came back good and clear um, and uh, and that was amazing you know I it's a long long story and actually one his healing of his lungs has happened in chunks over time um, but um, but God is just so good I can't tell you how I could live without him so now my daughter is a Christian um, and we live this different life now when I look back to what we to our life now to then maybe to the world it seems as though um, we are we failed it might seem to others as if we failed you know, no longer do we have the fancy Mercedes. No longer do we have the big fancy house with flash parties and, you know, um, everyone having this fantastic time. Um, but what we do have is, um, is worth so much more. We would never in any way ever, ever swap the peace and joy and healing that we've received um, for any of those things that we had before. Um, our tiny little house, this place which I loathed, I mean I loathed, is my sanctuary. Um, my daughter, who thought that we were nuts, said to us, Mum, please don't ever sell that little house, because this is the place where we all became the best people that we've ever been. And I can't tell you how that's just not about me. <laughs> I am not the best person in the world. You know, Nigel is not the best person in the world. We have made massive mistakes in our in our desperate attempts to I don't know be better we were worse we hurt ourselves we hurt other people um and um and none of that matters now or the things that mattered then just don't matter now um I'm sorry that I, can't, I, can't, I probably haven't got more to say than other other than we owe our lives to Jesus we've been given you know we're not young but we've been given a whole new second half of life. Um, uh, our marriage is like it was new. I'd love to renew my wedding vows because I feel like we're, we're marrying different people. The same, but so different. Um, you know, my daughter will never, her child will never experience the things that she experienced um, because of our, our lack. Um, her life will ever, forever be different. And so will her children. And they'll never know. They'll never know unless we tell them the things that we did and the mistakes that we made and the way that we were broken. They'll only ever see, God willing, Jesus in our faces. 
Um, and uh, I, I'm just forever grateful. Uh, we are on a, an exciting journey and who knows where that's going to lead. Um, um, but every day, in every way that we can, we attempt to be obedient um, because we know that um, there's no other way worth living. And, and I, can't, I don't know why the whole world isn't doing it. To me, that seems the lunacy. To me, that seems the madness. Why you wouldn't choose to have joy and peace. And that only Jesus can bring. Um, so I'm so grateful for, um, for Gemma and for Ivor and their wonderful ministry and the work they do. Um, I'm really grateful for your time here today. And I don't know if it's been useful or not. Um, and I'm, but thank you for, for allowing me to come and speak to you. Um, yeah, cheers, Ivor. That's oh, me. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Unbelievable. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. Well, so you're tough. very kind. You're also oh, very wow, you. wow, 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 man. That was absolutely awesome. You know, that was, not, that was, that was so spiritual. I'm touched. You know, my hearts are just stringing and purring. I don't, I've even got tears drifting out of my eyes out here right oh, now. It's just like, oh, that was just so touching and moving. I need I need to know that you can make a film about that one. That one just was just oh 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 wow! So loved it. Married for thirty years, you know. Uh, I love what you said. You know it, that you new Christian, such humble. You know, seven years in the faith, new Christians. Did you hear that, guys? New Christians, such humble, you know, always. And even though you knew before God, you always looking, you knew he was always with you, seeking to protect and care. You know, how comforting. And 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 and, and you saw it in your life through miracles, you, the, 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 the trauma that you came through, you know, within both of your families, you demonstrated that the violence, the aggression, the temper, the anger, the alcoholism, the, the addiction, the, the, the fueled stuff, the moving around, the unsettledness you know all throughout you know and then you come and then you met Nigel and then you got together and then I love the way that you talked about you, you, you you'd arrived you know like 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 many of us had you know like many of us had we arrived the dream house the dream car the dream job you know the things of the world that tell us that we're 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 in it and we're complete and 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 what it made me think about was that kind of like um there were times in my life when I'd arrived at something and I knew I couldn't fulfill it or couldn't really sustain it. But I went out of my way to cover up the outside and dress up the outside with, with all those facets and the look good on the outside, but pretty much dying on the inside. And you really reminded me of that. And, 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 and what it touched me for and what it touched me was my lack of peace and joy and healing. You know, that's basically those three words that stood out for me when you said the peace and joy and healing the lacking of that that was in my life at times in those turmoil when i was in that world searching for that peace searching for that joy searching for that healing but always in the wrong direction and that was just like whoa do you know what i mean and there were many times i walked into churches and felt that that, that holy spirit you know there are many times when i walked into churches broken and many a times like you said you know with welled up crying and things like that but sometimes i had such a um a, a disobedient rebellious and even a hard heart and i you know i had this thing about wanting to lean on my own understanding and and it just killed me um time and time and time and i love what you said you know what i mean it was for me you know when i arrived to 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 to, uh, to wollaston i thought how did you bring me here lord you know, how did I end up there from London, from Bethnal Green, Bethnal Green boy, you know, grew up all my life. It's like, how did I end up there? What have you got in this little place for being here? And it was like, you know, I, I remember when we moved in into our little bungalow, it was like, oh, you know, me and Gemma looking at it going, how have we ended up here? It was like, how have we ended up there? And it was like, oh, what are we doing in this village? So there's there's nobody here, do you know what I mean? And then we, we, we were like you, you know, let's go to church. Let's go and make, let's go and get connected in the church. Let's go make some friends. Let's get, let's get known. And, we, and of course we, you know, that was, that was um, nearly four and a half years ago. We got married in that church, you know, you know, we buried my mum in that church. We met you in that church. You know, we met Age in that church. And, 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 and God has just done such a mighty work, you know, in us, within that church. It's like, like, wow, you know, 
and, it, and it was just listening to your story it was kind of like very very similar of you know coming to Wollaston what next and then a the mighty work that God just does in placement and and I think it's really important you know that when God places us somewhere we, we sometimes think well what's it all about but he's at work in us he's at work in us for the good you know and I love that do you know what I mean I love that you've been rooted in the church ever since you know um, um you, you you've gained some valuable friendships you know and, and and I've seen you in the church you know what I mean it's like it's it's more amazing do you know what I mean and it's like you know tell Mike tell, tell Nigel I need his book <laughs> and he's, he's, oh Nigel didn't tell you Nigel's um, now being ordained for, for, as, as, as a minister yeah I'll tell you that because I, I need his notes all the time do you know what I mean I'm always asking him when I get an assignment Nigel <laughs> help me with this one help me with that one so yeah it's just absolutely amazing and I really identify you you know, with, you know, where you guys have come from and, and, and what God is doing in your life. And it's just such amazing. It was just such a lovely testimony of God's grace and God's beauty. And, and, and I just wish you, you know, uh, you know, all the best for the future going forward. You know, I, I know that God is, God is pretty much just started in your lives with what he's going to do, you know, with your ministry and with your church. And now he's building you guys up to do the, the work of the ministry in terms of what you do in the church as well. I love your prayers in there you know i love the you know the way that you're stepping out you know from what i see do you know what i mean and you're stepping out in your faith you know i can see that boldness in you i can see that you're you're sold out for jesus and it's just so wonderful so i'm really excited for your journey i'm really excited for um, your marriage I love what you said about your child, um, your daughter, 21 years of age. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Our kids look at us, they're only young, right? And they think, God, <laughs> what, what have we got? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> With our three young ones. Sometimes my, my daughter, she's only five, um, Ariana, and she just looks at me like that. And she looks at her mum and I'm just thinking, oh, my God. So it come and gave me a picture of your 21-year-old. Do you know what I mean? I can imagine the cringing that sometimes she must be seeing with you and Nigel with where you come. That was just awesome that's so powerful so enough of me that was a wonderful testimony you know i'm sure it touched you guys hallelujah so please come back and share with jane and um you know the, the floor's open so it's just a you, you know you know the usual format so come in and please share back with jane We've got Lindsay. Go, Lindsay. Hi. Good morning, Ivor and Gemma. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Jane. Special welcome. Thanks so much for sharing. Let me get your picture. Yeah, Jane, you know, I really um, am grateful that you didn't have your as much notes and you just spoke from your heart for the rest of it. So it was, but it was so good. And I know you can only cover such a small bit, but um. You know, that is seeking happiness in anywhere else. You know, I get that, you know, always the next thing, the next holiday, the next gig, the next something to, to fill that, you know. Um, um, and never, never, trying to be good enough. Was I going to be, you know, trying to be good, you know, forever thinking if I just be good, being good and ticking all the boxes in life will make me happy, you know, that, and, and yet I was on a search for something, you know, I was going on silent retreats, I was going to conventions, I was in recovery groups, I went to Buddhism, you know, I, I, I was, I was, I was praying to God I didn't know, Jane, I was praying to God I didn't, I did not know, God, I did not know the character of God. And I went and I used to go into church, you know, and, and, and I generally would come out feeling worse because I just felt condemned because I wasn't hearing. I never properly heard. Maybe they told me, but my ears were shut. But I never heard why I needed Jesus. I used to say, I, I used to, say to the minister, why do we need the middleman? I don't understand why we need the middleman. <laughs> Please explain it. <laughs> and it was for years I didn't know. I did, but I, 
no one, I feel like no one said like the character of God and my, de my total depravity of me, my sinful nature. You know, all I heard was do good and give to charity. <laughs> That's what I feel I heard. And, uh, you know, which are worthy that come from being in right relationship, but they don't earn me a place in heaven, which is what I thought. I thought, you know, once I got clean and sober, I'm generally living a good life. Therefore, the doors of heaven will be open for me. Oh, that's what I believe, you know, straight from hell. And uh, it was beautiful to hear about the two, both you and your husband on that journey together. That was absolutely incredible that, you know, the timings, because you hear of people, maybe one partner coming. Uh, one is and the, the two of you were on married young in that journey and the hope it gave me when you spoke about your daughter you know we're we're all I'm sure everyone on here is praying for the salvation of someone in their family and their friends and the world in general so that your daughter come along is just the you know she, she's seen the change in you that only Jesus can bring that change that you know and when you said you got a hug from Jesus, I loved that. I absolutely loved that. You know, I, I gave my best friend in Aberdeen a big hug at the weekend. And, you know, if she felt something in that hug that was of Jesus, you know, she's not interested in my journey as, uh, the, you know, but I pray that she'll know something. You know, she will know that, you know, we've met Jesus. We've met him. He's in us, us, and we want to share him that others may know that peace and joy. So thank you so much, Jane, for being with us this morning. God bless. Amen. Absolutely lovely. Lindsay, it's always lovely to hear you. And, uh, you know, I really feel that joy and enthusiasm. And I do know the Lord is doing a mighty work in your life. And I just pray that he just continues to develop you. And I know that you're going to touch a lot of lives where you are all the way up in there. Is it in Aberdeen? Is it, is it in Aberdeen? Aberdeen. That's it. You're going to touch a lot of lives all the way up there in Aberdeen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Gemma, over to you. Hi. Hi. Morning, everyone. Oh, what a fantastic testimony. Thanks, Jane. Oh, I can relate. Honestly, like I said, I can relate to so much. Like we ended up in Wollaston and it was a bit like, oh, what are we going to do now? Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, this wasn't the plan. Like, I think God really loves Wollaston. Do you know what I mean? I think he really loves and joins people together in that village. And um, yeah, we ended up there. We put a search, like a 30 mile search radius, like from our last property. And um, that was where we an ended up. And um, when we left our last house, because obviously we got made homeless, but like, it was really quite sad. Like went back to the house, like, and it was like that era had just, ended it was like I know we're just here temporarily now and we the plan is to get back to Wollaston but it was just like so sad that era had ended like so much had happened in that house in like three years four years it was like so much had happened and and um yeah I can relate to um like walking into church and just crying because like I'd never, I never cried like at all. And um, like Ivor used to, Ivor started dragging me to church and I would resentfully like tag along because I had nothing better to do with my day basically. And I was like, I don't, like I was so codependent that I just didn't want to be left on my own. So it's like, okay, I'll just follow you. But like, I would sit there and the shame of crying was like, it would panic me because I'd just be like, oh, like they're all gonna like see me crying, like being vulnerable in front of people, and like the worship would come on, and um, like tears would just start like coming down my face, and I'd be so embarrassed, and the shame, and, and like it was just too emotional for me. Like I couldn't deal with the emotions at like 29, 28, and it was like, 
are never been taught to deal with them type of emotions from let alone all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes in and it whacks you on the head and you're like whoa what, what is that and um yeah it was um an experience and I just kept getting dragged and um eventually I also went to Alpha and um we was awful in Alpha like me and Ivar was like the like you would never want to be on an Alpha course with us because like for one I didn't believe and for two Ivar had um believed in the Catholic doctrine in a sense so it was like between the two of us it was a bit of a like a conflict of no it doesn't mean this and what does this mean and I, I, I in that time of the Alpha course I developed the concept of the Trinity and I really um, like what I couldn't understand I understand if God Jesus and the Holy Spirit and I was able to put it all together and join it together and it was a process like we would come out of Alpha and have the biggest arguments on the way home because I believe something and he believes something and we would just be screaming at each other and I was like this is not normal but we kept going we kept going back and um, it was very soon after that that I had um, a real like a, a, an audio encounter with Jesus in that same church and I was like wow and it was part of the process but after that it was um yeah it was a lot and then we moved to Wollaston so it was kind of like I had that encounter and then we left and we came to Wollaston and I was lost and I was confused and I didn't know what I was doing and I knew I'd met Jesus and had an encounter but what was there to do now and like anyway the journey is never ended isn't it and um it's always um hold on sweetheart it's always a journey and um I've learned a lot over the few years um and it's difficult it's a real difficult walk coming from not knowing Jesus to then suddenly knowing Jesus and trying to walk with him and not understanding it and and that's what's um the blessing that he's given us this ministry to really understand the love of God and, and what he's doing in people's lives and it's great that people can come and share testimonies because sometimes like your testimony is all someone's going to hear of the love of God and that's sometimes enough to think wow like I want to know a bit more about this Jesus and um, yeah it's so good to see everyone and uh, God bless you thank you for coming along and sharing. I love the words I love the words that Gemma uses dragged to church, kidnapped her for a recovery. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, can still, I can still see there's a lot of regeneration that needs going on in her life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're recording. <laughs> oh, no, that's so funny. And I remember it. Yeah, we, you know, we was on a, we was on a zeal of like 90 and 90 and 90 and 90 and 90 and 90. And, 90, and I said, you're coming. <laughs> <laughs> you're coming <laughs> and, um, and, and lord the lord is just you know I, I remember one day just on on that note you know the deliverance and healing and because you said that the deliverance and healing that one day she came out of church and it was like it was like an encounter that was just like i was like whoa you know the lord was just this delivering and healing both of us because we were just both like you said you and nigel we were just both broken and the only place that we could seek that comfort peace and joy was in the church and and it was funny that uh, you know from that place he moved us to a church and it was really really strange what he did next from Luton we ended up in in the place called Shefford and on the left was a Catholic church if I walked out my house which was one minute and on the right was a Church of England church which was one minute walk so it was kind of like Wow. So I was in my element. You can imagine on the left, my Catholic doctrine. Do you know what I mean? I could do free services a day, morning. And on the right was my Church of England. And, and she went, 
I don't like that Catholic one, she used to say. <laughs> Over to you, Lee. Over to you. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, it's nice to see you, Ivan, and Gemma, and everybody I can see. But thank you for your share, Jane. Um, yeah, it's nice to wake up to uh, listen to someone's testimony. And, you know, what really got me was when you told me your daughter was a Christian now and you know uh, and then it made me think of my daughter and my son they're both upstairs and and I know that's going to happen um I just I, I just know it would happen and how they really need they really need him in their lives you know and how much he's changed my life and um this time last week, I was taking drugs and it was terrible. I came back Friday around f past four in the afternoon. My daughter had arrived from Manchester to spend the week with me. And I was just like, oh man, I just slide down on the floor. And I was just, I have to have faith that. I felt so ashamed of what I'd done. Um, it's in a relationship, and when you start talking about your relationship, it made me think about this relationship. You know, we met 30 years ago, but, you know, I've been asking Jesus to help me in this relationship for four years. I ain't been able to, 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 to stop it because of my uh, foolishness, really. Uh, just because Jesus came into my life, I'm going to... Um, it's like that scripture, um, Matthew 7, 6, about uh, feeding your pearls to, to swine and they would just tear you. And that's just what's been happening. But I know you, I've heard said it all before and I keep on saying, I keep on saying it, but I really did need to see what the devil could do to me. Just one more go, yeah? Uh, and he really did, because um, it weren't my boyfriend. I know that he just wanted to make sure that, you know, that, you know, what, what he would do. And he, he comes to kill, steal and destroy. And he really just has been destroying me since I've become a Christian. You know, I, I went straight from being, oh, I remember, um, I just have to share this. I remember when me and my friend from NA, we was both trying to find Jesus. And we went, we, we done this Alpha courses too. And I don't know who's the, the maddest out of both of us, but I think it's her. And, uh, you know, we, we just couldn't find him. Yeah, we, you know, I was waiting and waiting. I was waiting for years for Jesus to come into my life. I mean, I remember going to, um, well, that story first of all. So we were doing this Alpha course near where I lived. And some things were happening, yeah, like... Anyway, she she found him before me, and I was like, nah, I couldn't believe it, yeah, she, and the way she found him too, I was like, you're mad, she said that, uh, anyway, I'm going to talk about what she did, but um, I had my little son at one point, and he was only about four, and I was so tired, I, I, I said, please, I just, I was looking for somewhere to sleep, because I had to pick him up in a few hours, I thought, ain't worth going all the way home. And anyway, uh, I think I was, Jesus was in my life. And, he, and I went into Great Ormond Street Hospital just to go to sleep for a couple of hours. And in the end, I was in, I went into Great Ormond Street and all of a sudden, I ended up with a pastor and his wife. It was his wife that, that, that sort of like I met first of all. She got me, she, she laid me down, she put my feet up, she got me some Lemsip. Then the pastor came in and was praying for me. So, you know, Jesus was coming in and he was, I could see his little uh, gifts. And I loved that when you said about your uh, your first meeting in the church and that it was Jesus that gave you a hug. And yeah, so uh, I was speaking to my friend yesterday and don't really believe in the Bible, but you know, because he said things have been taken out and it's been whatever. But, you know, no one can, no one can uh, change my views on what I believe. 
Um, so yeah, I'm. Um, uh, this is my second day of cigarettes. Uh, and my relationship has ended. It has. I know it has. It's definitely ended. And that relapse had to happen, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I really, I really, I really looking forward to just knocking on the door. Yeah, Jesus, that door. Whoever knocks on the door, whoever seeks me, he will answer. I know that. Otherwise, I'm just going to be like walking around, like, what am I doing? As soon as I connect to Jesus, it works. And uh, really pleased for you. Um, really pleased that your children has become, your child's become a Christian. And amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> Ivan, you're muted. <laughs> and I was. Oh, no, he was. Oh, bless you. Bless you, Lee. Bless you. Thank you for that. Over to you, Chloe. Morning, everyone. Thank you, Jane, for your um, testimony. Yeah, I really loved it. I loved um, relating to, um, you know, Jesus restoring families. It's so close to my heart. You know, it's a season that I've been in for a while and like I can just look back and just so grateful where God's brought my family, you know, restoring it to restoring it in him and building those foundations. And he doesn't just stop with the immediate family. He doesn't, hasn't just stopped with our household that he wants to extend it to, you know, our brothers and sisters. Like my sister came to Christ early this year and was baptized and, I know that, you know, we're going over to South Africa and I would just feel like a sense of there'll be great victory with uh, mine and my husband's testimony of what Jesus has done in our household, with our children, with our marriage. And I know that that's going to bring great, great victory for him and, and for, my, for our extended family. And that's where God's really called me to be is in my family. And it's just such a great thing that, you know, he does start with our family. He wants that foundation strong in him. And, you know, then we can go out and, um, you know, bring everyone else into this great, great life. You know, bring everybody else into this great news that he's given us, you know, the gospel. And, um, you know, it, it can make me so emotional to, because um, I can't quite believe it. I cannot quite believe it where he's brought us from. You know, you know uh, my house was so upside down and so much hate and anger and resentment and you know addiction and God's just restored that tenfold more than I could ever imagine I like, even like more my marriage you know I don't think I ever loved my husband the way I, I should have loved him and I didn't quite understand that love until I understood Jesus's love for me um, and then I was able to love my husband you know the right way um so yeah, it's it's just it's it's just so nice. The timing's so great to hear your testimony and just that confirmation for me is like this is a great commission he's given me to bring more to him. And you know, we've got a lot of believers in our family, but they're like, I just feel like there's a lot of chaos going on. There's a lot of chaos. A lot of people have lost their way, and uh, I just feel like they're just going to be so shocked when they see us because. It's not, it's not going to be the couple that they've ever known or met before. It's going to be completely different. They're just going to be so shocked. Um, and they're just going to be want to know more because there's a lot of um, divorce going on. And, you know, and these are people that believe in Jesus. And um, I just feel like they're just going to, he's just going to restore what the locust stole tenfold. And it's so great, you know, it's so great that we got that victory today. And thank you so much. And everyone have a very blessed day. Oh, wow. That was absolutely wonderful, Sister Chloe. Absolutely wonderful. The power of God is so shocking. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's going to shock some people. And they're already shocked already. So well done, Chloe. <clears throat> 
great to hear you this morning and great to everyone this morning it's been a, a really really powerful morning it's been a really powerful testimony it's touched a lot of hearts there this morning and we just thank god for what he's doing you know in each and every single one of our lives and let's just um um if there's anybody else want to come in before i close bobs over to you yeah um, that was a really good testimony yeah i definitely relate to that because um in the beginning, like obviously I've been married for 28 years. Um, the first 20 years was like um, living in hell. Although obviously we were going to church, but we didn't have Christ in the center of our home. So it's only you like, the, only like the, far, the last past five years, we've got um, Christ in our home. So it, it, you definitely need to have put Christ first. And I can see a big difference. So um, yeah, I, I really think it's really important that um, put God first, put him in, the, in your home and then you'll see a big transformation. So I'm just pleased that, um, yeah, I'm just pleased that God has changed my heart and changed um, my husband's heart and changed all of us because we both came from broken homes. And no, yeah, no. I think, yeah. Sorry, my husband's just been rudely interrupting. He's not interrupting me, Prince. Yeah, so anyway, I'm getting the kids ready for school. I don't know why he's just being silly, but yeah. So yeah, I just want to say um, thanks for your wonderful testimony. And yeah, it's just um, keep, continue with our, continue with our, um, our Christ journey. And just, yeah, we just have to be so grateful that um, God can turn lives around and yeah putting in first does make a difference so thank you for listening to me and that's what I'd like to share so that's wonderful thank you thank you for everyone that shared thank you Jane for a wonderful testimony I'm just going to pray for um, marriages and I'm just going to pray that we're all you know for our marriages to Christ we're all married to the uh, to the bride of Christ so I'm just going to lift up prayers right here particularly you know I've heard about families you know I've heard about you know unity I've heard about coming together so there's something in 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 in, in what what I've heard this morning particularly around family so I just want to want to just close and pray around that, particularly also around children, particularly around you know the unity, the particular around you know bringing it back together. And we just pray that God is um, God's will in our families right now. We just pray that God's will be done in our families, not ours, because we've heard of what our will does, we've heard of where our desires go. So we just want to pray for God's will, will in our in our marriages, in our children, in our in our relationships, in our relationships relationship with Christ or also being one of the most important relationships that we can have so father we desire to walk in love we thank you lord that we we can that you surrendered to us lord that you surrendered your will to us lord that you that you give us life we thank you for the extravagant love of Christ in our homes, in our relationship, in our marriages, in our children. We know that this great love is like an aroma, an aroma of adoration that we just adore you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are a sweet healing fragrance, that, that the Lord, that when they come in contact with us, whether they are saved or non-saved, that they will smell the, the sweet fragrance of you, the aroma aroma of you in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you Lord that our mission in life is to live as children flooded with revelation of your light that we that you will give us supernatural fruits that your light will be seen in us that your goodness and righteousness and truth will will will, will be oozing out of us through your living water that's inside of us. so thank you father God that we'll learn to choose what is beautiful to you our lord we thank you for our homes our homes that can be a spiritual training ground where the revelation light is exposing wrong perceptions maybe about our marriage maybe about our, our, our belief systems maybe about where we've grown up maybe about where we've come from and i pray today lord that we can take those thoughts captive free and break down those strongholds through the power of the holy spirit we thank you lord that you are correcting us forgive us because sometimes we forget the mission we forget the place we forget that all our energies come from you and we try and do things in our own strength so father give us that self-protection of uh, give us that self-protection of us of us sometimes trying to do things in our own strength trying to change people maybe our children or maybe our family members lord give us lord we know that only the holy spirit and we're just vessels so equipped us to do your bidding in the mighty name of jesus the so, father we ask you to deliver us from sin 
We ask you to deliver us from pride. We choose to let go of self-promotion, to fill those holes in our souls. And, and Father, we pray today that even in times of trouble, as it's been demonstrated today, that we have a joyful confidence, knowing that the pressure will develop patience in us. And that patience will give us endurance. And that patience will refine our character, that proven character that leads us to hope in you. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today that we are learning because of you to be incredible people and to be incredibly patient in the knowing and in the waiting that we choose to be gentle we thank you lord that we remain faithful with a hopeless love that the love surpasses them all so above all we choose to let love be the beautiful prize for which we run in in the mighty name of jesus i say today go in peace and serve the lord your god father lord we thank you lord that you lift us up and you cover each and every single one of us with the blood of jesus the blood that surrounds us lord, right now that no weapon formed against us shall prosper father we just lift up you today because you are the king of all kings. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for Jane's testimony that touched our hearts, that you are working it out, that you are constantly working it out. And I pray, Lord, that, that we, don't, we don't turn back or we don't turn away before we, we actually receive that miracle in us, Lord, before we experience that encounter with us, that we can keep trudging through, Lord, knowing that you are with us, just like footprints in the sand, knowing that you are walking with us, us Lord, knowing that you are bringing us through in the mighty name of Jesus and that you always come through father that we look to you as the orphan the finish of our faith and we submit to you today father we know that faith coupled with obedience and I believe that um, Jane demonstrated it really really well today that she was obedient to your voice she was obedient to your call she was obedient to your will and I pray that we can all be obedient to your call uh, and hear your voice and be obedient to your will in jesus mighty name we pray amen god bless you all it's been a wonderful morning oh colin your hands up uh, hello sorry i was on the underground and i lost the connection thank you for your lovely uh testimony uh, those walk that welcoming hug when you came to the, the church i was just with you there just imagining all of you in a big hug, a massive group hug. We need that right now. Um, and I really relate to, you know, you've got everything, but it's not enough. It reminds me of the recovery. One is too many and a thousand never enough. And we put great emphasis on this chasing that, that impossible dream, that impossible perfection, that best pie, that best thing. Sorry about the noise, I'm on a busy road, but I was really lifted by your testimony and by our other brothers and sisters. Uh, I remember when I got out of the baptism pool at Wollaston, and someone, I think it was Chloe, put a towel around me and it felt warm and it felt like Jesus was working through that warm towel and wrapping my spirit and lifting me out of the baptism pool so that, you know, that I was comforted and felt warm and, you know, as I start my journey and my walk with Christ. Uh, that I'll be lifting, I'll be carried. Um, yeah, so thanks again for your share. Um, I'm struggling a bit at the moment with uh, eating disorder and after losing a close friendship. And yeah, I remember when I had my diagnosis uh, seven years ago, and you know, someone was looking out for me, and I I got supported through a year of chemo, you know, and came out in remission. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful um, thing to be able to have a connection to a higher power. Yeah, thank you.
Beautiful. What a fitting end to that. Absolutely wonderful. The way the, the way the Lord works, man. What a fitting ending. That was the perfect timing for you to come in and share that. So bless you, Conan. Bless everyone this morning. Thank everyone for sharing. Bless Lee. Bless Lindsay. Bless Zach. Char, good to see you. Sarah, good to see you. Barb's lovely to hear you. Chloe, Gemma, um, uh, Conan and Jane once again. I felt like Nigel was with us as well with that as well. And bless <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> bless Nigel and Jane. Look forward to seeing you all soon. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Our next meeting is on Sunday night at 8 p.m. May God bless you and keep you. Have a blessed weekend and take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.